2022 is upon us. In less than 24 hours, we will be in a new year. For some, that signifies the start of a new beginning, new hopes, new dreams, new ambitions. For others, that means it's a chance to review the year that's just been. Look back and find out what you've managed to achieve, which is what I'm going to be doing in this video. So sit down, grab a cup of tea. Let's go. 2021 signified the beginning of Darlingborough Model Railway and also the beginning of this channel. This year has been a lot of me basically just trying to find my feet really, um, find what I'm doing with the layout and also find what I'm doing with the channel. My first real video began back in middle of April this year in which I explained the progress that I'd made so far from building the shed completely from scratch, getting the baseboards in, getting some lighting in and some basic plans for the next stage. Looking back at that video, I'll be honest with you, it was pretty dire back then, <laughs> if I'm looking back now. When I started to record videos on the channel, I was trying to focus on getting everything right the first time, which is never going to happen. Obviously, if you've seen any of my bloopers videos, there's a couple of links to some there, um, then you'll know all about it. But yeah, that's just the way life goes. Now, since that first video, I'll be honest, my confidence has increased a lot. I feel a lot more confident in talking to the camera, talking to you guys, delivering the video and, you know, knowing that people will be watching. One thing I will say is since I've started working on the layout and started working on the channel as well, I found it immensely satisfying, mainly because of all the helpful comments, great tips, positive feedback and just general support that I've received from every one of you guys. I have had nothing but positive feedback and it's really, really opened up my eyes into what a wonderful community model railway model making is uh, just all around the world. So thank you very much to absolutely everybody. Everybody who's commented, everybody who's watched a video, everybody who's liked a video, everybody who subscribed. Thank you to everybody who has kind of joined me and stuck with me for the last eight months. Since I uploaded that first video, I do feel that I've made quite a lot of progress on the layout since. I've now managed to get not only the baseboards finished, but the upper level of it as well. I've managed to get some track down and I've even managed to get some running sessions going as well. The first time I got the full running session going, it was great, but I was having a lot of issues. One is my drawbridge section. Um, that has been causing me a lot of problems and issues. Basically, the trains do not like going over that section at all. It is very difficult to keep the tracks aligned when it goes up and down. As it's a new year, I do really want to focus on what my goals are with the layout next year. Number one is going to be that. I am planning on basically rebuilding it completely. I have taken a lot of feedback and a lot of comments on board, and my plans are that I am going to be building it using Perspex. Um, a lot of people have said that it's a really, really good material to use, especially considering I am building a layout in a shed. The hinges themselves, I have decided, I'm gonna try these, which are cabinet hinges. Definitely the hinges that I've got are basically too, there's too much play on them, and they're not going to be um, particularly solid for that application. So I'm gonna be trying those. It may or may not work, but obviously I'm still in the stage where um, I am experimenting to see what's gonna work um, and what's not. I am gonna strip the sides back as well so that it's the perspex is on each end of the drawbridge section as well. So hopefully that's gonna be a little bit better for fitting as well. One of the things I do plan on doing is adding some springs to the end of the raised section. One of the issues I was having was that when I was putting it down, trying to get it aligned horizontally um, was a bit difficult. So I'm going to be putting some springs on and then when it pushes down, I'm going to be having some sort of catch mechanism to lock it into place so that it doesn't go up and down and hopefully everything will be nice and aligned. And last of all, what I'm going to do, make sure that the tracks are overlapping rather than having them tied up to the ends of the boards as well. I do feel that that would help 
just make everything align a little bit easier a little bit better as well so that is what i am planning for that section there once the drawbridge section has been completed i will be focusing solely on getting the track done i am going to be using flex track for all of the layout with the exception obviously of the shunting yard and the crossover at the start of the rocky bridge section also i will be looking at replacing all of the older second hand points with new points as well i do feel that the second hand ones have been great because they've enabled me to get into my head what i want to accomplish but for running an operational, I think new points would be a lot better as well. I'm going to go for Pico points because obviously they are considered the best points and have a lot less of the issues that some other manufacturers points have. Another issue that I've had is with the flexi track. Um, I have had all sorts of problems with it. Not necessarily problems with the track itself, it's just my understanding and my experience of working with the track i have had a lot of frustration which again has put me kind of off working on the layout as well my initial idea was that i was just going to use the uh, the fixed set track pieces um, for like the curves uh, and the straights and just basically use all that however i do feel that flex track is more <laughs> flexible um, in what i want to accomplish on the layout so I will be looking at doing that in the future as well I will have to get to grips with it I'm not gonna lie um, I still find it difficult but thank you to everybody who has given me feedback who has given me suggestions and basically helped me kind of come to terms with the fact that I'm not alone <laughs> in dealing with it when I actually come to do this I'll be reviewing all of the comments all of the suggestions and I'll be going back over everything that everyone's told me and basically kind of taking all of that, of that on board before I deal with this. <laughs> Another main issue that I'm having is this thing here, um, which is the basic Hornby controller. I have had a lot of feedback on that controller and a lot of people have told me, get rid of it, get something better, which is definitely something that I am planning on doing. Earlier this year, um, Tony from the Heritage line did actually release a video on his own channel. Um, I did mention it last video, so thank you very much again, Tony. Um, you can see it here, where he talks about the best way to wire up the layout. So what he suggested is I have separate controllers for basically each area of my layout. So I'll have one for the outside track, one for the inside track, and then one for obviously the shunting yard and the industry uh, area as well. That is basically what I'm planning on doing. I'm essentially gonna have three controllers, one for each area of the layout. It might get a little bit confusing to start with, but I'm sure I'll get a hang of it. Um, so that's basically what I'm going to do to replace this. Because um, it just doesn't cut it, I'll be honest with you. And if anyone has got one of these, um, and you do get the opportunity of what I would recommend is definitely replace it. Having a better controller is only going to be part of solving the issues that I've had with the running of the locos. In particular, my little blue diamond that I mentioned before has been running really, really sluggish and stuttery and I've had a lot of issues with it. Um, I did mention it in a previous video, which you can see up there. I have had a lot of issues with it and I've had a lot of feedback on the best way of servicing it. So definitely, I'm going to give this a really good service this year, um, obviously on a video. And I'm also going to give another service to my Class 58 as well, because that just tends to be running a little bit sluggish and slow as well. And hopefully, um, I can get everything back together again and everything up running nicely, but obviously you'll have to wait for that. Once all the track is down, I will then obviously focus on giving it all a very good clean before I start doing some running sessions. Definitely another area that I plan on doing next year. Now what I'm going to do with the running sessions is I am going to be doing something a little bit different. Every single model railway layout I've seen obviously has had some sort of running sessions and they're all very similar. You've got the scenery, you've got the trains going past, it all looks absolutely lovely and beautiful and stuff like that. But I've got something different planned for my running sessions. But you'll have to wait and see because I'm not going to give too much away, otherwise people will be like, oh that's a good idea, I'm going to do it on my layout. And then then that won't be original. So if you are interested in that, then by all means, like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. Once I have got the track up and running and everything up and running nicely, 
I will be then focusing on the scenery. I'm going to make sure that everything works first before I even think about scenery. However, I have got in my mind what I'm going to do scenery wise. At the rear of the shed, I am going to be having a station. I've decided that I'm going to put some platforms in and it's going to look sort of like somewhere that you can stop and then go off into the town of Darlingborough, which is obviously fictional. Um, <laughs> as you come around, it's going to become more scenic. And then when you get to the Rocky Bridge section, obviously this is going to be pure scenery. With the Rocky Bridge section, I do plan on including some water effects on the bottom there. It's always been the plan. I've just never got round to it. So I will be including resin water. Uh, I want to make it look like a river. This whole area here is going to be like a big lake. Going round further, I am going to be having a tunnel. This is for two reasons. One is I do like the idea of having scenery at different levels. So obviously with the Rocky Bridge section it will go down. With the tunnel I'm going to have a large mountain up behind it. So it's going to go right up um, and it's obviously going to be quite imposing there as well. The second reason is I do want to cover that corner of the track because even though I'm going to be using flexi tracks, there's no getting away from the fact that I'm going to have to have quite a nice tight radius curve in that area just so that the, I can get the actual locos around the track there. With the drawbridge section itself, I am planning on creating that as a large bridge. I am looking at moving away from the whole viaduct type of scenery. A lot of layouts have it and it looks really, really nice, but I feel that I want something a little bit different just because, well, I am a little bit different really, to be fair. Um, <laughs> the drawbridge section itself will obviously be the top of the bridge. And what I'm planning on doing is to prevent any issues with it kind of catching is the suspension will be actually on the sides of the bench work itself. Um, I may have them just folding in and out just to make it a little bit easier for access, but they'll be kind of fixed and the drawbridge can come down onto it rather than having the whole thing as a move out lift up section. At the other end of the drawbridge section, it's gonna be another large tunnel, large mountain rocks, probably some waterfalls, sort of uh, grassy areas, plenty of like sheep and just lots of nice scenery area in that corner there as well. And then that will come out straight into the shunting yard, which obviously is going to be a very industrial area. I am kind of thinking about including some sort of engine shed so that it looks like it's kind of tucked in around the mountain, which might be nice. And then as you come around from the shunting yard, obviously you'll go on the main lines back into the station. And then at the front, you will have the industry area, which I am planning as well. That will include the warehouse that I've scratch built. If you're interested in seeing how I've done that, you can look up there. Um, obviously, it was going to be very industrious. There's going to be chain link fences, night lights, um, sort of barrels of oil and just general crude and debris. And it's just going to look an absolute mess. It's going to look brilliant. So that's what I'm planning on the whole layout itself. The shed itself is pretty much complete. Um, I do have ideas on just improving it slightly. One of the issues that I've got is obviously right behind me, as you can see, it's a complete mess. Yeah, um, I've basically crammed as much as I can onto one shelf and um, it just looks awful, to be honest. I'll be honest, this isn't even all of it. I've actually got another cupboard in the house, which my missus is constantly telling me, oh, you need to clean that cupboard out and get all the stuff in the shed. That's why you've got a shed. So um, I am planning on getting more storage set up in the shed. I am going to finish insulating the door. I've not quite finished that yet. I'm going to get a better handle on the door as well because at the moment I can't actually shut it from the inside very easily. And also I am going to focus on insulating the roof as well. So um, I have noticed that the insulation on the walls seems okay, but obviously I don't have anything up here. So obviously that's just bit of plywood really and uh, it's not very very good. I am also going to focus on the outside of the shed which you don't see um, but the path is like very overgrown at the moment um, and obviously when I come out at night which tends to be when I do come out to film the videos it's quite difficult to see the path and I usually trip over bits and bobs and god knows what so I'm planning on just sort of getting rid of uh, some of the grass putting some paving slabs down, some better paving slabs, some gravel, and getting some night lights as well, just little solar lights just to light up the path. Just so it's a little bit easier and a bit more nicer for me to come into the shed at night as well. 
Now, I'm going to be honest, there is going to be some changes to the channel itself. Ever since I have started back in April, I have religiously posted a video, a new video, every single week. It's usually been on a Friday. Um, however, I have found that it has been getting incredibly more difficult to just keep up with that regularity. Obviously, I have got other commitments in my life. I've got a full time job. I've got three kids, um, obviously family. I've got this, that and the other to deal with as well. So what I've found is that I'm not always getting enough time to come into the shed to, you know, sort of set up, film a video, get it edited and uploaded. Uh, every single week. If you've been a regular viewer, you've probably noticed the last few weeks or so, um, the videos have been sort of a little bit sporadic. They've not been every Friday. Some have been on Saturday. Some have been on a Sunday. I think I've even posted one on the following Monday as well. And what I've done is I've found that for the last few videos, there's not really been a lot of decent content. It's been more me sort of res responding to comments, me responding to feedback um, and sort of talking about what I'm planning on doing. That's not really what I want to show you guys. I want to show you getting on with stuff. I want to show you actually, you know, stuff being built, stuff being worked on. I want to show you the scenery being built. I want to show you, you know, running sessions. I want to actually show you the layout itself rather than just make it all about me. So next year, I'm definitely going to be continuing to post regular updates and I'm aiming to post at least once a fortnight. I may post more often, I may post once a week if I get round to it, but I may also post less than once a fortnight from time to time as well, depending on how busy I am. If I did continue to do it every Friday, one, I'd probably burn myself out and probably lose interest in producing the videos, and two, I'm sure you'd probably lose interest in listening to me waffle, like you have done for the last 20 minutes. Although it may seem on the face of it like a bit of a negative thing that I'm not planning on releasing a weekly video, it does give me the opportunity to focus on producing better videos um, when I do release them. It will give me the chance to actually get back and focus on the sort of video content that I was planning on doing on the channel from the beginning. I will be able to focus on like more um, scenery tips and hints and guides weathering techniques i'll be able to focus on producing how-to guides on all of that um, as well as other tips and hints on like money saving when you're building your layout um, also you know sort of talking about running sessions and you know revealing new locos and new rolling stock and stuff like that when i get it um, so it would be interesting to know what are your thoughts on not having a weekly video from me um, drop a comment down below because i would like to know what your thoughts are. Do you feel that it would improve the channel or do you think that not having a weekly video um, people are going to be moving away from me? Um, let me know because I am interested in obviously your feedback as I am always because <laughs> um, obviously you guys really really help push me to uh, continue the channel. Behind the scenes, I am also planning on making some changes to the channel as well. Um, I am planning on upgrading my video and my audio kit. At the moment, obviously, I've just been using my tablet, um, which is why it's not been, you know, the best of quality video wise. I do kind of plan on kind of upgrading it and just making it look a little bit nicer, sound a little bit nicer for you guys as well. Also, I am looking at upgrading my edit suite as well, because at the moment I'm using a very, very old Mac and a very, very, very old version of Final Cut Pro. Again, it's probably not going to be a change that really affects you as a viewer, but obviously for me, hopefully it'll speed up my uh, editing process. My workflow will be a lot more smoother and uh, hopefully it'll be a bit more efficient uh, for me. Also, I am planning on starting to do some live shows. It might just be me in the shed having a running session or whatever, having a bit of a live chit chat with you guys. Um, who knows, but definitely I am looking at the possibility of doing some live videos next year as well. And I might even drop in some YouTube shorts as well, you know, just to uh, keep the keep the interest going. What are your thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> I have talked a lot, I, I know I do apologize, um, but let me know what your thoughts are on the changes to the channel itself. Drop me a comment down below. Um, obviously, same same old goes. If you do drop me a comment, I will respond. In my Christmas video, I hinted also that I was going to be doing some side projects that are not Model Railway related as well. 
Now, as well as being into modern railways, I'm actually into science fiction, in particular um, stuff from like the 1980s, 1990s. It was a good era. One of the franchises that I like is called The Giver. Now, you may or may not have heard of it. It is originally from the 1980s. It started off as a Japanese anime. It kind of started off as a comic. It was turned into a sort of animated movie and then obviously became a live action movie. One of the things I'm planning on building is my interpretation of a Giver unit. Now I've got a rough prototype here which I'll be working on. It's going to include lighting, it's going to include some sound effects as well um, and basically it's going to be completely built from scratch. Don't worry it'll be better looking than this. There will also be um, a bio lab as well that I've started to build as well um, which is going to be more sort of science fiction um, futuristic tech as well so if you are interested in science fiction in particular the Giver um, or like movie props in general then look out for that as well I'm expanding my horizons a little bit um, but obviously the main progress and the main bulk of the channel will obviously be focused on the layout so if you are interested in other things again let me know um, and if you've heard of the Giver again let me know because um, it would be interesting to know that I'm not the only person that's actually heard of it <laughs> so 2021 has been a really good year for me and for the channel and I'm hoping that 2022 is even better and I hope the same goes for all of you who are watching now I hope you have a very happy new year have a very safe but merry new year and I'll see you in 2022 that totally didn't work happy new year everybody <laughs> I'll have to clean it up <laughs>